And since its uh, foundation, we have hosted uh, more than 150 research groups who came over here for a period of five to ten months to do their research. And we've hosted more than, uh, um, I should say, something like uh, uh, 200 conferences, international conferences. And of course, the research and advanced schools that are uh, hosted by the Institute, and we have six of them in various fields. Uh, the most famous and uh, uh, prestigious one is the one in physics, in theoretical physics. So all I have to do is wish you uh, um, a fruitful and um, joyful, because you have many parties on the way, um, uh, fruitful and <coughs> joyful uh, a school. And I wish, um, well, I hope to see many of you coming back to the school in research groups. So thank you very much. Okay, so up till now, Shimon, I was uh, the chairman. Uh, now I would like to give a general uh, introduction. So first I want to welcome all the students which came here. Thank you very much for <coughs> deciding to dedicate your holidays and instead uh, learning. V very welcome. Then we would like to thank our director, Professor David Gross, which would have been the next speaker except he couldn't make it this time. I think it's the first time since the year 2000 that some technical issue uh, made that he will only come tonight. So he apologizes and he wishes the best uh, for the school. We want to thank the lecturers uh, for coming and those which will come uh, more, more. We would like to thank the director before he leaves the room. I think he just left it. <laughs> we, we, would like, we would like to thank the whole staff and of course we would like uh, to thank uh, the committee. Uh, is Barak Kol here? Okay, Barak uh, is not here but uh, it's thanks to him that, that this, you have been accepted as students. He, he was the main person responsible in deciding which students to accept, and Misha Smolkin uh, was also involved, and also the other members of the committee. Okay, now is some general introduction about the structure of the school. So one thing the school has, which is rather special for us, is evening tutorials. And the idea of the evening tutorials is that one or two lecturers of the day remain with the students. The other lecturers are forbidden, but they are not here to hear that. They will have to be told in person. They are forbidden to be there because we want the answers of the lecturer to be directed to the students and not to impress the his uh, or her colleagues. <laughs> so that's, th that's the, first, uh, the first thing. Now, the, how will the tutorials work? So one of the things we have gained experience about is to try to have questions, but also to try that the thing be effective. So we have here a box. And Igor, can you show them? Thank you, where the box? This is the box. And uh, <laughs> we ask you during the day uh, to put in questions. You don't have to put in your name. Just put in questions that you have about lectures of the day. If at the end the professor of that day is not uh, here for the tutorial, he will still be able to read the questions and be ready for his next lecture and the next day about them. So in this way, I'd, not every question will, may be answered, but in this way the, tu the tutor has an opportunity to organize and have start at least a very good uh, tutorial. So that's one. Anonymous? They can be anonymous. People may be proudly also put their question and claim priority with it, but th they it may also be anonymous. Then uh, the next thing which we are having for several times are gong shows. At this stage, there are 11 uh, students which have inscribed for the first one and 11 which have inscribed for the second one. Uh, if more people want 
uh, to be in the tutorials. They had an email, please send in time an email because according to the number of students, we will be able to see how much time we need to allocate. So the sooner that you commit yourself, uh, the easier it will be for us. Then I was asked uh, that, you had, that you do, I, even though I think you all did, but that you do make very clear if you want to participate tomorrow in the New Year's party. It is in a very nice place, this Khan Theater. It's one of the two theaters in Jerusalem. And please let us know if you want to participate. And do you want to participate in the tours? I think when you do register, you are asked the question. But if somehow you didn't answer it or you didn't register yet, please give the information so this can be organized well. The next thing is food. So the way it works, there is a building here that used to be the administration building of the university before 67 where the president and the rector of the universities used to sit. And when you get out, you just go to the left all the way till you hit a building. That's called the Sherman Building. And this is enough. You don't need coupons. This is enough to go to places which are prescribed. Just sit down there and then pick your food. So this is how the lunches are being handled. Today, at 6 o'clock, there's going to be a reception. You're all in, invited, and this can provide your dinner. In most, tomorrow, dinner will be provided as part of the celebration. However, uh, afterwards, uh, the dinners are uh, on your own. Uh, OK, I, my friends are not happy when I say it, but I will still say it. We are now in a quiet period in this city. Uh, still, many of you could have been their first visit to Jerusalem. We never know when things may or may not happen. We have here uh, students who have been here for several years and haven't seen anything happen. But still, try be alert. Be alert to what is going around you. Notice what's going around you. We don't want anything bad to happen to anybody. So please, if you go especially to crowded places or to the old city, be aware of what's uh, happening. Okay, this ends the introduction part. Now the next part uh, has to be the uh, Zeloved. Okay. The next part is I'm doing. Uh, Uh, the next part, I'm actually uh, substituting here uh, for David Gross. Again, uh, he couldn't give me his, trans his transparencies because uh, he didn't prepare them yet. He was supposed to prepare them on the plane. That didn't happen. So I improvised, and you will feel that, it, that it's improvised. And in a way, uh, maybe, uh, I'm sorry. למה אני רואה את כל הרקע? אה, פה, כי זאת הסיבה. אוקיי. אוקיי, and I apologize for the improvisation, and in a way, uh, this is a reverse engineering. We have the lecturers, and now we have to find a, a logic by which we uh, invited those uh, lecturers. So it's going uh, to be here. So first thing, uh, They want the, a part of the light to go uh, off. Okay. I wouldn't put it totally off. No, I think the problem is on the screen. The problem is on the screen. People say is that better? Yeah. OK. OK, so in a way, part of the structure of the school already appears in the poster. And if you look at the poster uh, very carefully, it's decoded in it. So you see that there are different workers uh, in the field. 
there are people who are trying to construct space-time from some boundary. You see that their equations are incomplete. They have only one side, but they are making a big effort in order to succeed to go deep inside horizons or deep inside space and try to build out space from the boundary. We have here Igor Klebanov, which is one of the persons who started uh, working on, on the boundary and trying to relate it to the bulk and vice versa. But as an exercise, uh, this I'm telling you that this poster also codes in it uh, homage to the other person which worked with Igor on this issue. And it's a riddle to find out where that is uh, decoded. You need some knowledge in order to do that. And anybody who, who succeeds can tell me if he succeeded to see where there is a hint for other. Shimon, you should, a hint is that Shimon should be able to solve that problem, actually. Now, the other type of workers, you see, are not looking towards that. They are doing their own stuff on the side. And they are actually gold mining and jewel mining. And they are finding the ju all kinds of jewels in conformal field theory, which is a field which has been studied for a long time. But they are looking for other ways to look at this thing, innovative approaches to old problems, innovative approaches to new problems. And they are sitting on the left side. They have this X. And they are, look they are mining. For f they are really interested in gold and other rare materials. And this is really the structure of the school. It has these uh, uh, two parts in it. Now, what in general, where are we in, in physics? It's a time to say, how do we view this in the context of theoretical physics? So we have a machine which works the best in any accelerator per time, which is the LHC. It provided 189.3 inverse femtobarn of data for us to analyze. They only promised 150. So this is well above what was promised. OK, so that's what the experimental or the engineers succeeded to do. And now I want to share with you a, a letter which was sent uh, by Pauli to Klein of Kaluza Klein fame. And Pauli, which was younger by six years, sent this to Klein when Klein finally got a professorship at the University of Stockholm. And what he said to him is the following. I'm not of the opinion that finding new laws of nature and indicating new directions of research is one of your great strengths. Although you have always developed a certain ambition in that direction. I find much more beautiful those of your papers which deal with applications of known theories, such as, for example, the paper with Nishina about the new scattering formula. And the letter goes on in the same uh, vein. Now, of course, it's great to have such friends. And th 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 this uh, it appears in a book of Pais. And Pais writes down in a very, let's say, very patronizing, condescending. condensating way, and says, no, it's good, condescending way, because it says, look, uh, you, it's good that you have friends like this which put you in proportion. Uh, th the only problem is that both Pies and Pauli did work on Kaluza Klein series themselves, but they probably thought that uh, Klein is not good enough uh, for that. Okay, so take that into account, and here is a, le a letter we got from Nature. What we have here are various bounds on the discovery of supersymmetry, black holes. These are all kind of bounds obtained with high confidence that one does not see A, B, C, and D. Now, in a funny twist of events, actually another type subject on which we work a lot and was usually said that that is esoteric, black holes, actually do suddenly appear in experimental, are experimentally detected in certain circumstances, which is an interesting twist. And of course, in this school, and I think many of the theoretical physicists uh, do ignore this letter we got from nature, 
but still I think uh, we should be, ta should be taken uh, into account. So let's go through the various aspects. For aspect number one, we will have the talk of ego. Ego uh, will discuss a new parameter, which is actually an old tradition, which started in condensed metaphysics and statistical mechanics, that is introducing to a system a new parameter, an N, which you can take large and expand in. And over the years, there's been a lot of fundamental discoveries by studying such cases in certain systems where you had the basic constituents in the fundamental representation, in, in their joint representation, in a tensor uh, representation, and you are going to have a very exhaustive review, I think both on the past, but mainly on the, f on the present, where there have been quite a few advances on this front. Um, a lot of them being, uh, let's say, motivated by the SYK model, and I put the S largest because we have S here as a lecturer. Now, let's look a little more into these black holes and things SYK model uh, wants to show us. Oops, sorry, here. Let's see if this will work. Where is it here? Okay. So, uh, we have, in recent years, a big attempt to relate quantum information theories and ideas of information processing with black holes. And uh, I, this is a short, just to lighten up, I told you I had to improvise, so this is a short movie uh, showing you how, with information, black holes succeed to do what every theoretical physicist wants to do, is write a paper. And we are going to have here two, uh, uh, two black holes, uh, acquiring knowledge through what we sent to them, writing together a paper about the crunches, about uh, what happens beyond crunches and banks, and we will hear a little bit about this also in the school. So this is the, the, how, the, how the black holes succeed to process information, and even black hole, I don't remember what number, with another black hole succeed to write a joint paper. After Ego, we are going to have in this vein Daniel Harlow. He's going to uh, discuss how code correction is related to building, we saw the attempt to build space, to build ADS, and even go a little bit beyond the horizon with that method. And also Amit Givon will discuss that thing. He will also discuss how in modern terms, one can try and identify and prove the absence of global symmetries in bulk ADS. In general, the statement was about gravity. Here, there is a, a larger degree of rigor when discussing bulk ADS. The next speaker will be on this vein, will be Douglas Stanford. He will discuss the SYK model. He will discuss what is called the Jakiv Teitelbaum or Jakiv Bunster gravity. Then he's going to discuss random matrix structures, and also he will discuss at the end recent work about going with non-perturbative effects beyond semi-classical geometrical description. And then the last one is going to be Jose Barbon. He's going to discuss physics on different time scales. There are physics, different physics associated with log S, S, exponent of S, and exponent of exponent of S. And concepts like entropy and complexity will be used to diagnose black holes. Next, we turn to the gold diggers. Uh, sorry, no, before. We go to a group. I think you will have here the best ever set of lectures, pedagogical lectures, on a particular endeavor. We have the initiator of this, Sasha Zamolochikov, sitting here. And we are, he was going to give four lectures. We are going to have also letter, lectures by David Kutasov, Ofer Aroni, and Amit Givon on this subject. 
This is part of trying to look from a different point of view of field theory. So one uh, way to look upon this is in the that once you take series of, of gravity into account, you may have to go beyond the Wilson picture. I don't know if that is a motivation of Sasha or just because he likes integrable models and he wants to see what such operators lead to, but I think the general picture is that in the presence of gravity, we have to realize that the standard picture, which goes very well, you have a UV CFT, you add a relevant operator, you flow into an IR CFT, which has irrelevant operators. But then, not all irrelevant operators seem to be the same. And by adding a particular one, which is called, uh, which is related to the energy momentum tensor, maybe one can g go b uh, backward, maybe one can get surprising UV completions, and in general, one can try and see what happens if you try to go outside the usual Wilsonian uh, picture. And as I said, I think you will get the most extensive description of that here. So you should all end up as heading a step before anybody else on this, uh, as students on this issue. Now we go to the gold diggers, uh, not to offend Zohar. <laughs> the jewels and gold that he's digging for, he wants, again, new points of view on conformal field theories. And one is, you start by looking at concepts which topology brings, and actually you can apply them to you to learn new things about and hi and highlight in a different way all things that you knew about the phase structure of quantum field theories and also he will put focus which we didn't do much in the past on the boundary for example how would QCD maybe behave if it has a boundary and what's going on on the boundary he will also try through Chern Simon's theory relating it to real systems both in the sense of condensed matter and also paying to a attention to theories which are free of supersymmetry and finding interesting properties they have. Nati Zeiber, which will be along the same vein, is going to discuss methods in order to analyze st strongly coupled conformal field theories. The methods will be more general. They will be applied in particular for three dimensions he will sh get lots of surprises and lots of structure. The final uh, speaker is a little bit outside our fields in some way. He's just condensed uh, matter in statistical mechanics. But as we already saw from the beginning, these systems are part of what we are going to study anyhow. And he's going to relate that, try to relate them even more to nature and strongly coupled systems in nature, like strange metals. We are going to hear about it and see if we get convinced. And he's also will discuss issues which appear a lot in condensed matter theory, but also in our view, which are emergent symmetries. And of course, he will describe the SYK model. And that's it. And now, without further ado, uh, Igor, it's yours. So our first speaker.